In this video, we describe the Van der Waals equation of state for gases. Right until now, the uh, most common way that we have to uh, understand the relationship between pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature is via the use of the ideal gas equation of state. And the ideal gas equation of state works rather well, uh, but it uh, necessitates a couple of approximations. For one, uh, when we think about the particles of the gas, uh, these particles cannot interact with each other. Okay? And uh, at the same time, it turns out that the volume of the particles, uh, and the size of the particles, has to be negligible compared to the separation between, uh, between particles. Those are the two approximations. Now, uh, those approximations work well when the pressure is very low, or when the pressure is uh, reasonably low. For example, atmospheric conditions, ambient conditions, as we have here on Earth, uh, one atmosphere of pressure, that works really well, and uh, you can safely use this expression uh, without trouble. Now, the problem is what happens when you go to higher pressures? Well, when you go to higher pressures, uh, the approximations break down. For example, when you see, uh, uh, when you uh, have a, a gas in a container and you decrease the volume, uh, thereby increasing the pressure, what happens now is that the molecules are actually not very far from each other, and it's no longer true that they will not attract or repel. That will happen if the molecules, on average, are close enough. But at the same time, because at high pressures, the separation between uh, gas particles is uh, uh, small, it actually, uh, the, the size of each one of the particles cannot be neglected compared to the uh, available volume that you have in that gas. Right? So under those conditions, and that's high pressures, uh, this, this equation breaks down, and then you have to do something else. Right? So the high pressures that we're looking at, uh, uh, looking at are pressures that are well above, say, 10 atmospheres, and, and deviations from this behavior become quite not, not noticeable when you go to 100 atmospheres, 200 atmospheres, and above. All right, so the question is, well, what can we do under those conditions where the ideal gas uh, equation breaks down? Well, something that is very common in the sciences, and in chemistry in particular, is that when you have a theory or a hypothesis that breaks down, uh, you try to, uh, instead of coming up with a new theory, uh, it's more common to try to utilize uh, the usefulness or, or what is useful of the old theory, but try to improve it so that you can actually describe uh, um, more behavior that cannot be described with the original expression. And that is the case for the Van der Waals uh, uh, equation for the gases. The idea is that you can uh, improve uh, these expressions so that you take into consideration uh, the reasons uh, whereby the, the, the uh, law breaks down uh, at high pressures. Okay, so one of the, uh, the corrections that we have, one of these improvements to the ideal gas equation is what is called the Van der Waals equation, which again has a very similar shape to uh, the ideal gas equation, okay? but it's uh, much improved. All right, so we see that the, on the right hand side of the expression, nothing changes, and then on the left hand side, what we actually have is um, uh, you know, modified uh, versions for the pressure and the volume term. Now, something that is important is that this pressure that you have right here is not the same pressure as that one. That is what we call the ideal pressure, and this is what we call the measured or real pressure. Okay? All right, so uh, then uh, let's try to see uh, what these corrections uh, are for. That is that they both depend on the number of moles, which is n, and then uh, this correction depends also on the volume, okay? and they have constants A and B. Those constants A and B are different for each gas. So the constants A and B will be different for oxygen, nitrogen, methane, CO2, helium, any other gas, and they can be determined experimentally. Okay? Now let's try to see then what the corrections uh, uh, try, try to do. Right, notice that uh, if we actually equate uh, these two expressions, right, P ideal is equal to P real, or measure plus A n squared over B squared, what we actually have is a term that essentially uh, uh, tells you that the real pressure is a little bit smaller than the ideal, uh, than the ideal pressure. Okay, so let's examine the cases where the real pressure, the pressure inside the container, container is actually less than what you expect if uh, uh, the ideal approximation doesn't break down. Right. So it turns out that uh, this term then uh, uh, makes that happen if there are attractions between the gas. And we're going to try to explain why. 
Okay, let's examine here a wall of a container and then a molecule uh, or a gas particle that is about to collide with that, uh, with that container. All right, uh, if there's no interactions between the rest of the molecules, this uh, 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 gas particle will collide with the wall, apply some pressure that we can measure, and that will be the ideal case. But if you're at high pressures, then you're going to have uh, gas particles nearby. And if those particles have some attractive force between them, what will happen is that, well, uh, this particle will be attracted to that one, to that one, to that one, and to that one. And you will, what you will see is that the pressure goes down for a couple of reasons. First, this attraction is going to reduce the kinetic energy of that uh, um, uh, particle that is about to uh, collide with the wall, so that the uh, pressure, the force exerted, is actually less than if those attractions were not there. Okay, that is one thing that happened. The other thing that happens is that you actually, uh, by the presence of these molecules, you have that fewer uh, molecules or particles on average collide with that wall. Okay, so you're actually reducing the pressure for two reasons. First, the momentum, the force of that uh, uh, collision is lessened by uh, the attraction of these neighboring molecules, and then the frequency of the collisions, the number of collisions per unit time also decrease according to uh, uh, these attractions, right? So each one of those uh, uh, terms depends uh, uh, on the density, which is the number of moles over the volume, okay? And that's why you have a quadratic dependence on N over V, which is again a, a, a molar concentration, if you want, to number of moles per volume. And I'm, again, again, A is just a constant that depends on the particles. Right, so again, uh, notice that that term depends, uh, or is, is responsible to capture attractions which do not, do not exist, we're neglecting in the ideal gas equation of state, but in reality, especially at high pressures, they're actually important. Right, so that is one of the corrections that we have here in the Van der Waals equation of state. The second one is this one. Right, so uh, uh, this actually um, uh, can be interpreted as follows. When you actually have um, the molecules being very close, Again, it matters if uh, the molecule is large or the molecule is slow. That is something that is uh, large or small. It turns out that uh, the ideal gas equation of state completely neglects the effect of the size. Right? So in the ideal gas equation of state, there's essentially no, no volume occupied by those gas particles, but in reality you do right? have some, some, uh, some size. So the idea here is that when you go from no volume to some volume, what happens is that the distance between uh, these particles gets reduced by a lot. Okay, and what will happen is that uh, because those particles are now very close, they might actually repel each other. Okay, so this term is designed to account for uh, repulsions between the gases. Okay, so in the end, uh, uh, whether you have more attractions or uh, uh, more repulsions depends on the absolute values of uh, B and A and on the values of the number of moles, the volume, and so forth, right? So, uh, uh, again, depending on the conditions, you might have that, uh, well, uh, uh, there's more attractions and therefore the pressure goes down. Depending on the conditions, you might actually have more repulsions and therefore the pressure goes up. Okay, uh, We will see a couple of uh, examples in the homework where you will actually be able to compare the uh, pressure as calculated by the ideal uh, equation of state and then the pressure as calculated by the Van der Waals equation of state and then establish whether the differences that you see between them are due to either uh, a predominance of attracted forces or a predominance of repulsive forces. Right, so in, in this video we have seen uh, how the ideal gas equation uh, occasionally breaks down, especially at high pressures, in a way to try to improve upon that ideal gas, which is called the Van der Waals equation.